in Hebrews 8, chapter, chapter 8, uh, verse 12, and also in Jeremiah chapter 31, uh, the Lord uh, details the covenant that he would make and contrasts it to the, uh, to the first covenant that he made. He says, it's not like the covenant that I made, but this is the covenant that I will make. And the, the last words of that, of that covenant, what we call the new covenant, or what he calls <laughs> the new covenant, he says, I, in, it's Hebrews 8, 12. He says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousnesses, and I will remember their sins no more. Those are very gracious words. Amen. And in, in those words, we, you, we actually find the gospel. This is actually like the soil from which the gospel grew mm-hmm. is God saying, I will. There, are, there aren't any commands given to man in that, in that covenant. The, the, the precise statement of that covenant, it was, it was what God would do. Amen. I will. Now, you know, there's, there's one way of, of ministering to the, to the brethren in, um, in taking out the, the treasure, treasure chest, so to speak, and opening up the, the lid and, and, and just peering in. And... And there's another way of opening the, the treasure chest and, and taking out one jewel and showing you, you know, just one, one jewel. So what I want to do as we come to this table is take out this one jewel that I call I will. God has, God has said, I will. Now, salvation is not a plea bargain. It's not man <clears throat> convincing God and prevailing like in an argument, and, God, and, and so God saves, and a plea bargain has been achieved. The gospel is also not a negotiated peace. It's not give, give and take, you know, um, make, like striking a deal, fi- finding the middle, the middle ground, no, no threats made. That, that's, not, that's not how the gospel works. Salvation is also not a divine reaction to sin. The God, sin was not the impetus of the gospel. The gospel is born out of I will. So God's not reacting. That, oh, look what man did. We're going to have to do something about that. The gospel is also... Yeah, the gospel is not God fixing up what you mess up. It's, it's, too, it's too small of a... Now, now, can God fix? Well, sure. But that's not, that's not the foundation of the gospel. Heaven doesn't wait for man to fall before heaven works. Heaven's on the initiative. In fact, the gospel is a divine initiative. God, he, he loved, we love him because he first right. loved us. Now, if it's true that we were dead in trespasses and sins, then who's got to start the work? Yeah. Right. There's, there's a lot of wrangling about the issue. Uh, yeah. But I, it's a divine initiative. Amen. When, when he came by, as he said in the prophets, we were, we were dead. That's right. The gospel is a divine initiative forged in heavenly places by... The good pleasure of God. That's where it began. That, that's where it. Uh, that's where it was like birthed. Is in the the good the good pleasure of God. There wasn't any human counsel present when the when the gospel was purposed. In fact, man man hadn't been even, hadn't even been created yet. So there there wasn't there wasn't any any counsel added by man or any opinions requested. It's, it's a divine initiative. So God wanted to show his grace, and he wanted to manifest his wisdom. That's, those two things are told us from, on an eternal scale of what God is doing. It's, it's, it's much bigger than God meeting your need. Our, meet, our needs are met. But it's much bigger than that. God is showing his, he's showing his grace, Ephesians chapter 2. And he's manifesting his wisdom, Ephesians chapter 3. 
And so man has been made as vessels in which God is doing what he wants. It's a divine initiative. That's what I see when God says, he, he sums up the covenant by saying, I will. It's a divine initiative. Now, this is what we need. This is, this is as Brother Fred was uh, uh, his, is famous for saying, has so perfectly adapted to our situation. So, in God himself is the fountainhead of salvation. That's what it, Ephesians 1.9 means when it says that which he purposed in himself. So, it's important for us to see the reason that God is saving. Because the devil promotes an imagination that, that God is just beside himself because he loves men so much. And that everything he does and everything he says is to ensure and procure your happiness. Is that not uh, quite common? And in, the, in this way, he's created a religion that actually helps people be even more selfish than they were by nature. They actually are actually coming to God to fulfill their self-seeking, self-gratifying desires. We have, we have the gospel because God said, I will. And he purposed it in himself. He found, the, he found the reason for the gospel in himself, not in us. I will. In fact, technically speaking, the covenant is between God and the Son. And then we become partakers of that when we believe on the Son. So in, in his I will, there is, there's deepness of earth for, for your roots to grow down. It's into, into his I will. In his I will is the rock on which the wise man builds his house that stands through the winds and the waves. In his I will is the fatness of his house that nourishes and sustains the soul. His I will is like a, a lighthouse guiding and directing in the, in the, on the stormy sea where where direction is hard to, hard to, hard to perceive and, and your direction can be turned and, and changed by the tossing of the, of, the, of the waves and the direction of the wind. But his, his I will is like, a, it like you gain your, you have your sense of direction by his I will. I will is our ground for asking God for mercy and forgiveness. Because he promised, I will be merciful and I will forgive. What better ground is there than to ask God to do what he had already promised to do? His I will is effective for resisting the accusations of the accuser against us. So in his I will is our full assurance. Amen. Because we, we can have assurance in God doing what he purposed to do right. in himself. Uh -huh. yeah. See, it, 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 it take, takes from us the, the surety of, of, the, of the ground to this imagination that God's reacting to us. It, it, it steals that, that assurance from us. But we've come, we're believing in what God has said that he would do, that he will do. And he, as he said in the prophets, he asked, who will let it? Who's going to hinder God from doing? God is going to be merciful. It's just a matter of whether you get it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. So his, his I will is worthy of our meditation. Yes, that's right. That's what we, we come to this table to, to remember, to bring up again, and to, to meditate, to, uh, to, to think. That's, um, David said of, of meditation that his, he would prevent the night watches. That means he, he was up when most everybody else was asleep. And it was in order to meditate in his word. Because his, his word, what God has spoken, is, is worthy of, of, the, of this constant meditation, of this, of this continual return to this table, 
to, to remember him, to meditate, to think, to bring up, to bring up again, to, to look at again, to, um, to, to, uh, to set your eyes, to fix your eyes uh, on it. So the I will of God actually has set this table to which we come. Because God said, I will be merciful and I will forgive. That's why we have a table that's a blessing to come to. Because God said, I will. So let's do that now. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the, the gospel. We thank you for the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, uh, which we come to remember. We pray that you would uh, open our understanding more fully uh, to the, the offering, the unspeakable gift that you have given to us in Jesus. And as we come to this table, Lord, we pray that you would give us strength in our, in our minds to remember Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen.